What is going on, everyone? Commodore Lies here today. Bring you guys my live reaction on One Piece manga chapter 1018. Now, the chapters finally come out. We are here today to read the latest installment in the pinnacle of our literature. That is One Piece. And I'm not too sure on how this whole thing is supposed to work out because I think we're going on break after this chapter. So it's like a chapter break, chapter break kind of thing. Um, because I think we have a double issue coming up. So for anyone that actually knows what's going on, clarify in the comments for me. Uh, because I haven't really got a chance to see. I just know the fact that I think we're on break after this chapter. But it's an older break and then the other ones are like more for jump. But I'm ready for this chapter, man. Last week was one of those like, yo, something we wanted to know about, you know, in regards to the whole like I guess these are things that like, you know, you get you hear about in the SBS, right? Like Lucky Roo was the one that took you know, Luffy's fruit and everything. But then to get it actually in the story, like, you know, that th there's somebody that was actually guarding it, but essentially having a connection to when Shanks took it and everything. Like, I, I just, I don't know, man. It just sounds so fire. And then, of course, Sanji and Queen, there's stuff going on. I'm assuming with Zoro coming back into the uh, the whole battles and stuff that's going on, he's probably going to find King, which I hope is the case scenario for, for the sake of my uh, sanity and stuff. So, and then the whole thing with Tama afterwards, you know, with the... Uh, the gifters, pleasures, and all that. I was a little surprised, though, when she was knocked out that, you know, the, the effect still went on afterwards. So I'm guessing her ability is a little bit different than everyone else's. Because normally when you get knocked out, the powers kind of just stop. So I guess that's a little bit different there. But we'll probably find out after more. But let's get into this chapter, man. It's time. Let's go, man. 1018. Jinbei versus who's who they make a delivery they tell me we're not gonna go skip away i like that man i like that because listen bro who's who being like this whole cp9 agent like you know back in the day and stuff prodigy to rob lucci and everything the tempest kick the shave i don't know man like I, I would love to see that fight with sanji too because again we saw that before with jobber and everything but i, I don't mind it with jimbe because it should be actually a very good fight a prodigy like that of rob lucha going against one of the former warlords of the sea man and we see right here ulti in the page one <laughs> a whole bunch of little dinosaur like plushies and stuff and the reading up on a dinosaur book i don't know if it's supposed to be uh land before time but anyone who watched that back in the day real ones if you know about that so cover request by honey namako Page one reading a picture book while Ulti pesters him to play with dinosaur plushies. Okay. You know what? She's actually adorable, to be honest, Ulti. It's just that you laid hands on my daughter, so you know, I had you have to go down. Maybe not by a special beam cannon from Big Mom, but at least you have to go down. A Vivri card booster pack featuring Odin and the Red Scabbard is now on sale, which uh, there is a little bit of information I did hear about that also in regards to uh, Roger and the name of his sword, which I know is a bit a, a bit of a joke. Uh, in the community right now because of the name behind it but let's see the requester asked for kids versions of both characters but would have decided to draw them as adults which i think well, yeah it's, it's I, I like it actually better like this because it shows up more for old uh, personality and page one even though it's like you know just leave me alone but he might actually be enjoying land before time so all right <clears throat> all right the chaos continues to unfold castle interior yeah a total of 300 headliners with gifter powers have switched sides. So you see all of them going in now. A little girl gave them orders from above the stage on the live floor. Somehow she was able to sway them. Amen. Tama right now might be going for coach of the year. I don't know what it is. But she might be the Phil Jackson of this era, man. It was that brat. What? She must have some kind of weird power. I think we can stop it by killing her. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. We ain't gonna let that happen. This is bad. They're targeting Tama. Yo, Us I love Usopp right there, man. U Uncle Usopp taking care of, uh, of Luffy's daughter, man. At this point, look. Luffy Kiryu, Tama Haruka. If, if, if you know your Yakuza, you know why I say these things. Just look them up before you say anything. Because I need, I need Luffy to be the Kiryu to her Haruka, man. Scorpion Death Needle. God, Taifugo Sama. So he's just taking out some of the other members there. Because remember, he switched sides as well. But see, Nami and them running. <laughs> Who's like, ah. Oh, Daifugu could. <laughs> the thumbs up. Up on. Or sell A. Speed came through. Everything went just as planned, right? Master, let me on to it. Who's up on the behind? I found Komachio collapsed back there. You don't have to worry, though. Leave him to us. Really? Thanks a bunch. Amen. I love this for Tama, man. She's giving out the orders. Handling business. No one's putting hands on her and stuff, man. 
Love to see it. Her ability really is amazing. No kidding. Enemies one moment, friends the next. So, Nami, can I be your servant again? Yo, Zeus. Are you serious? No way. What? We could be partners instead. How does that sound? Nami. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I hope Big Mom dies this hard because with her powers being gone, it would let Nami reset and go back to trying to be strong on her own without the need of a Mickey Mouse power-up. But... We're just going to have to wait and see. But I am really hoping, though, that Oda, like, just says, you know, Big Mom's time is done. Should have been long done before, but... Out of the way, Nami's partner coming through. Yeah! I guess she's not the only one who's amazing. Help samurai, help the samurai bring down Kaido. Are you out of your mind? Some subordinates are following the headliner's lead that makes 2,000 additional traders. So you see the rest of them now as they're going uh, attacking one another from, both, from the same side, but the ones that defected uh, to go with Tama and them. Their rampages also cost us an additional 2,000 2, casualties. And you see now, uh, back to where CP0 is, the number of Beast Pirate troops had already dwindled from 30,000 to 20,000. If you account for these new defections and casualties, that then that means it's currently 16,000 versus 9,000. So the gap is starting to close up a little bit. The Gifter's help could result in White's continued success. The victor of this is of no consequence to us. We just need to confirm his death. Have we verified? They're talking about who's who. They're talking about who's who. They're talking about who Wait, but then it makes me wonder, like, did they really come to Wano for him? You know what I mean? Because it's like, do they know? They know probably something about the, the, the Gomu Gomu Nomu too. Or unless it's just because of him, because maybe who's who has other information that is like should not be known, and because they have to wait until the perfect time to go after like Kaido's group, where it gives them that chance. But I don't know, man. Like, for... have we verified his identity? Even if it's him, any confidential information he has should be dated by now. Anyway, his survival wouldn't harm the government. Okay, so, but I don't know, man, because. It... Because then it's like, you know, the one, one wrong piece of information that gets out and then you're screwed. But what the hell could it be, though? You know what I mean? Like, unless, I don't know, they, they know something more about the gum gum that we don't know. Allowing a rogue escapee to live would set a bad precedent. Well, who's to say he'll even survive the night? He's facing Jinbei after all. Oh, man. Now we're going into the fight. So, fourth floor. We got to get out of here. Who's who's Sama is getting serious. So you see the cat area and stuff where all like the little uh, uh, the spots and stuff where they'll hang out and everything all just being demolished. And you see right there in the middle with Jinbei and who's who. Moonwalk. Going up top. So that means you hold a grudge against Luffy. Huh. My real. Yeah. And he says it. Because I see the words. My real issue is with the one who stole the Gomu Gomu fruit, Red Haired Shank. So there you go. No third parties. No, oh, you come here, take this. Oh, Shanks, oh, thank you very much. No, he straight up pulled up on a world government ship and said, Yoink, I'm going to take that. Lucky Rue, go get that for me. And that's what happened, man. But of course he did, bro. Like, you tell me no third party nonsense. Nah, because at least it, it makes sense, though, for him, why they couldn't do anything. Here it is, Red Hair Shanks. It's Lucky Roo, the fighter of the crew. Come on, man. Bang, pistol. Go straight after uh, Jinbei. And as he gets the block in, he still got cut. That is impressive. He got the cut in even on the Bush When you can nail that on someone with Bushoku Haki and, and still lay uh, a wound on them, that is impressive. Because it's almost like in a way what happened with Cracker and Luffy when Luffy was trying to go up with the uh, the Gear 4 and stuff and he got cut still. like and the, It still had the, bl uh, the blood coming down. That in itself, I think it's pretty impressive. Because, you know, there was always that worry that he would just be a carbon copy, though, for Luchi. But again, people can still grow over time, right? Luffy wears the same straw hat and he's the one who gained the power of the fruit. It's only natural for my resentment to spread to him. So it's not just... Of course, on Shanks, but then over time, it, it goes straight to Luffy. And you see right there with the Fang pistols. I, I, bro, it's like, doom, 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 doom. like, just multiple ones being shot out. And Jinbei, of course, getting out the way. Just below on the third floor. 
Something's collapsed in the ceiling. My arm. Isn't this Hu Hu Sama's fang uh, pistol? Fourth floor. <laughs> Dodging was a wise move. Even your arm in hockey wouldn't be enough. If you had tried to block it, block it, you had been eaten alive. I don't think a slimy fishman can move that fast on dry land, Jinbei. I'm not sure what to say to that. It's generally no longer acceptable to express such discriminatory, discriminatory views on fishmen. Oh, man. He said, yo, you want to bring racism into this, man? Like, I'm going to wash you right now in the next page or two. You don't want to bring that nonsense near me, man. Because I can flex in the water. We know about that, man. I can get I can get 90 if, on, on a given night. But if I need to drop 50 on land, I got you, man. Ha, ha, ha. My bad. And the buddy's taking the stance. That reminds me. There's something else I want to ask you about. Iron body. And he comes in where right there. Jimmy's like, oh. Fang cavalry flash. And he just... Bro, he is like... He's like that starving cat after like a week, man. You don't feed it. And they see like a big piece of tuna right there. In the case, we got a fish right there. A live fish. He just says, yo, I'm hungry. I'm coming for that. But Jimmy says, nah. Try to get the block in. But he might have gotten hit a little bit. And they just held off for a sec. Bro. No, yo. Jimmy. Like the whole. Yo. He kind of did like a little hook thing. Grabbing onto the teeth. Fishman Jutsu. Ebb tied shoulder throw. Okay. So he just slams him right on his back afterwards. And nah, man. Look, yeah, you can't look. This is Jutsu's, Judo, wrestling, any method when it comes to the martial arts, man. Look, you can't be disrespecting because they they hold their own weight when it comes to these fights. But smash him down his back, but I'm assuming he's going to get right back up after that. And he gushed on a little bit about the way. Water bullets. Shave immediately says, nah, we're not doing this. Damn, that hurts. Huff, huff. About that thing I wanted to ask you. Huff, huff. Back when I was in prison. Why doesn't he just say from Impel down? You know what I'm saying? Like, because if he was there and indirectly, like, knew Jinbei or saw him, like, I heard a story. I was mockingly told to pray to a certain someone for salvation. Apparently, slaves in ancient times believed in a legendary warrior that would eventually come and save them. They called him Sun God Mika. Sun God, I don't know. It was said he would bring la. It was said he would bring laughter to their lips and free them from their suffering. Who knows if he really existed, though. You know what? I don't know. It's one of those things. I think it's like a brand new thing. Like out of nowhere. But what does that have to do with Jinbei though? I heard a story. I was mockingly told to pray to a certain someone for salvation. But what does that have to do with it? What, what does Jinbei know about that though? But you see the look on his face after. And he has like the uh, exclamation marks. My cruel sentence was dragging on for what felt like forever. So I clung on to the legend. I didn't care about the details. I just wanted to be saved. What does that have to do with me? You led the Sun Pirates. I heard the crew was made up of former slaves. Besides, isn't the history of Fishman a history of slavery? So that's where he's getting it from. But does it, does it really have that much of a correlation with it? So Fisher Tiger knows a little bit more than we know about this uh, this dude. There's no way that's supposed to be uh, for him. It, it's completely... Because Nika, it looks like someone that's completely different. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't... I don't know, but could Fisher Tiger know something more than that? But then I guess it's like coincidence too. Because it's like, again, with the whole thing with uh, Luffy having the fruit and stuff because of Shanks. And then he says this after. But I don't know. Because Jimmy might know something more based on the reaction he had. I heard the crew is made up of former slaves. Besides, isn't this the history of Fishman a history of slavery? Finger pistol. Okay, so there's one thing of Rob Lucci's. He has two as well. Spot. And just tries to hit him. And I don't know. If, is Jimmy trying to Bushoku his whole body? Like put the arm in hockey around him? Yeah. Crushed him. Who's who? Take him down. 
The flying sticks are unreal. Even a former warlord is no match. And he's just holding on. The guard who told me about Nika vanished a few days later without a trace. I figured that maybe the story wasn't meant to be shared. And hearing it put me in danger too. So I risked my life to break out. It's curious, isn't it? I love to hear what you know. And he goes in with the finger pistol right after. And his finger just breaks. And just gets sent back afterwards by Jinbei. But my thing is, okay. So, he never went to Impel Down. Because he would have just deliberately said that. Otherwise, but what kind of prison was he locked up in? That's the only thing. Because he, the county jail? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you you, you lost the shanks and they put you in the county jail. I don't know if, that, if that's a good thing. But... I'm assuming they would have to stand pulled down for that. I don't know. But he goes in trying to continue on with the finger jabs and stuff. With the finger pistol and everything. His finger breaks. And Jim basically holds a stance. Fisherman Karate. Shark. Bro. Holy. No way. This bird is just squishing his wrists. Shark grip. And you see Buddy just screaming out. You see the lightning uh, coming through. I have nothing to say to you. Who's Husama? Take this. And he tries to go for a kick. And Jimbei just takes in the face. He says, no. I'm going to gouge you in half. Fang pistol. What? Fishman karate. Ultimate technique. Damn it. Why are you so mad all of a sudden? Ha. Ah, hey, get off my tail. If you're going to make broad statements about other people's history... Gargoyle tile fist, bro, and his head, bro, the waves, the waves right directly to the end. A heavy blow. You better not be half-assed about it. And, yo, I don't know if he beat him or that was just a heavy shot. And he, oh, no, who's who's so much? And then the break next week. But then look, oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. No, the, no, the look on his face. The look on his face, no, oh. It would not shock me one bit if we get something about Fisher Tiger, the Sun Pirates next chapter. If that look right there is the look of somebody who's about to go into their flashback again. But with this information, I think we're about to learn something very soon. Now, Sun God Nika, though, I don't know what exactly their thing is. Because, like, when you look at the, the whole appearance, right? Buddy with a long wave hair, spear in one hand, sword on the other. Because my first instance, right? Because would Joy Boy be an actual, like his actual name name or that's like the empathy? You know what I mean? Because some people just go by the empathy and then we never know their true name. You know what I mean? But then it's like, and it would make sense too because again, the connection after Joy Boy had, you know, with Poseidon, the whole apology and all that. You know, maybe somebody associates a Joy Boy, if not him himself. But at least this person seems like it's going to have some kind of affiliation to the Fishman uh, race and everything. Right? Because for Jimbei to kind of get that kind of reaction, he knows exactly who the Sun God is. And it would not surprise me, too, if Fisher Tiger also, like, when it came to form the Sun Pirates, there was something to do involving uh, Nika itself. So, I don't know, man. Because this is one of those things that's completely brand new. Unless there's something in the story we knew from before that maybe hinted towards it. But the reaction, though, from Jinbei, you can tell, like, there's something, like, a lot more than that. I don't know if it's something, like, if it was that or something, you know what I mean? But I, I don't think that's going to be the case. It has something to do probably, like, way deeper in history, you know, for their uh, their culture, for, like, the tribe and stuff, so... But yeah, man, I don't know if this means that uh, Who's Who's been taking out the paint just like that. I could see it maybe going one more chapter, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past Oda, you know, to end it now and then continue on with the other fights. Because right now, this paint, this chapter itself, like just the, the amount of stuff that we got here, I think we get so hung up on a fight needing a chapter or two, basically, so that we can get all this stuff. Because remember, the amount of stuff that we got here, the anime is going to really extend everything after. But I have no problems with it, man. Because this is actually a good fight. For what, what it was right now. Unless this, like we're going to get continuation afterwards. This was actually good. From what we've seen so far. Like, who's who ain't a scrub at all. 
And he's able to hold his own and actually lay some hits in on a Warlord. Former Warlord, I should say. But we know the caliber that Jinbei is. Right? To go toe-to-toe -to -toe against all these other people and everything. Like, but man... This Sun God stuff is going to be super interesting. And I would have to guess next chapter when we come back from break, it's going to have to do with Fisher Tiger. Like, you don't give Jinbei that kind of look at the end of the chapter with, like, the, the, the kanjis and all that and then the grim look afterwards without diving into a flashback. Like, I would honestly put money down. We're going to see Fisher Tiger on, the, like, the first couple pages just talking about who the Sun God Nika is, you know, because it wouldn't be surprised me it has some kind of inspiration to what made the crew even more uh, at the time and stuff, you know. But yeah, this was this was a good chapter. I would say it's a good chapter. Obviously, the main course of the whole chapter being the fight itself <clears throat> with Jinbei Husu. Who, getting that information too that Shanks, by the way, was in fact the one that did steal uh, the Going Going Nomad. Like the confirmation for that, that's great. Because I had my worries that we're gonna do this whole third party stuff, and someone took it like. After the fact with Lucky Rube, but no, it, directly Shanks just took it. So, but then it makes me wonder though, he probably is not an op. He doesn't work with the government at all because I know him going to the reverie was one thing. They had the talk and stuff of, you know, uh, there's, there's so many things about Shanks, man. We have to figure out what's going on with him. But CP0 being here is to monitor what's going on with, uh, with who's who is interesting because what other information he would have that they don't want leaked out, you know what I mean? And then hopefully Big Mom does die still at the end of this arc because I, I need Nami to not get Mickey Mouse power-ups. I just can't. I cannot have that happen. Cannot have that happen. Like, I get why, you know, in this moment, it, it, physical strength, it was tough to beat Ulti, but there are other methods. I just wish that we had more focused time on her to get there without having to go here. Take Zeus. Do this. You're fine. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below in regards to the chapter this week. Let me know how you guys felt about everything that was in it. Um, do you think that we're going to stick with the whole thing with Nami and the whole Zeus stuff as partners? I personally don't. I think for a fact the Big Mom will probably end up going out in this arc. And then Nami's going to have to, you know, grow on her own. Hopefully get proper more focus and stuff in the next coming, arc, uh, coming arcs to come. Um, the stuff afterwards, though, with Jinbei and Who's Who. Like, let me know how you felt about the fight itself so far. Do you think the fight's done? Do you think we jump into a flashback and then we get the end of the fight itself? Let me know how you feel about that down in the comments below. And what's your thoughts on the Sun God itself? Like, do you think, like, this person may have an affiliation to not just the Fishman, but maybe something to do with the Void Sentry, something to do with Joy Boy, possibly Poseidon? Let me know down in the comments. Like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. If you want to be part of the weekly experience when it comes to my coverage of One Piece week in week out, subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell, Sandor, set the day with everything that goes on the channel. With that being said, I'll catch you guys when we come back from break, which I assume will be two weeks' time. And then we'll see what's about to happen soon, man. Because we're entering the climax of Wano. Hopefully. Hopefully. And uh, we'll see what else Oda has cooking for us, man. So, Commodore last signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care. Going crazy. Yeah, we going crazy. I'm with the team. Yeah, yeah, we going crazy.